What's up everybody, this is Cakes and welcome back to another tutorial in which we talk about a fixed timestamp loop in which we will be able to update our game at a fixed rate and then have the renderer run much faster. First I think it's a good time to read up on what delta time really is or what delta time is used in games. Essentially the way it works is we have to do some work in the game and on the graphics card in order to update and render our game and this time is what we call delta time. It's basically the time it takes to update and render our game between two pictures aka two frames and that is called a frame time. The usual problem that you run into with delta time is that the game behaves differently at different frame rates and the most notable example example is Skyrim where if you uncap the frames it just goes ballistic and so what I want to do today in our game and again I recommend reading through this I'm not going to go through the entire article because we're going to do something very specific we're going to update our game at fixed intervals and that fixed amount is going to be 60 times per second so the way this is going to work is we're going to keep track of the delta time the the time it takes to update and render our frame and then we are going to progressively add this to an update timer of of our game state and once it is greater than what we call an update delay and if we look into this this is one divided by the updates per second which in our case is 60 frames per second if that is greater then we simulate our game basically we update the celeste if any if we have any other moving actors we update those and we calculate their position their new position that we want to get to in this frame this is also the time where we do calculations for the input because we can only gather or update the input if we simulate if we update the input between simulation steps then we will lose key presses for example so we have to simulate and then gather new input aka by resetting the input and then below this loop is the rendering part basically we render the player and we render the tile sets because we always want to draw something we just not always want to update and the way this works is we have to keep track of a previous position and a current position so whenever we do a simulation step we will calculate a new position that we want to go towards and while we wait till we can simulate again we will lerp between the previous and the current or let's say the next position and that is then displayed to the screen and for now we are lucky we only have to do that for the player which is a good point or a good place to put it in in order to get to the fixed time step loop we have to first have a way of collecting delta time and i will be using the chrono library of c++ because it is cross-platform and i haven't found a very good example on how you can do that in c so in the main function at the very top where we have the cross-platform functions i want to add in a function for delta time in order to get delta time we will include chrono this doesn't have to be included here actually but i'm just going to put this next to each other and then we have a get delta time function that we have to copy and then implement below the reload DLL at the very bottom. And this is what it looks like. We're going to keep track of the last timestamp using a static variable. Basically what this means is this line, since it is static, is only going to be executed once. And so the first time you call this function, it is going to store the last timestamp in the last time variable. We will always get the current timestamp and then we will calculate the delta time between the last and the current timestamp using std chrono. Once we are done with the delta time, we are going to store the current timestamp in the last timestamp and return delta. And now that I think about it, this actually needs to be before the reload DLL right here let's put this right here because it is in the order it is there as well delta time then reload dll now that we have a way of getting the delta time i want to set the initial timestamp by calling get delta time here and then in the while loop we obviously want to get the float delta time by calling get delta time now that we have a way of getting the delta time we obviously have to supply this to the game for sure and so i'm going to add this in at the parameter here delta time and then at the very bottom, I'm going to put this as a delta time parameter as well. So float delta time at the bottom here where we have the wrapper function. And then I'm going to quickly reorder these a little bit to make this look cooler. You don't have to do this, but I like doing this. Right, now that we have changed the update game function, obviously we also have to change the header in the game.header file. So at the very end here, add in a float delta time. And then I'm obviously going to change this to look cool again. And then last but not least, we also have to do this in the game file. So over here, go to the exposed function sections and then add in a float delta time. And now we should be good. 
Now, there seems to be a little bit of an issue here because we are not supplying the Delta Time to the update game pointer. I forgot that, so make sure that you do that. All right, now that we are supplying the Delta Time to the game, we can start working on the update loop. And the first thing that I want to do, which is very important before we continue, is whenever we create the window, we also have to set how many times will we update the window. Is it locked at like vertical sync or not? Basically, does the window wait for vertical sync or not? We don't have that at all. And so on some computers, if we don't set this option, it will run at like 2000 frames per second. And on some other computers, it will run at 60 frames per second. And we would like to have at least programmatic control over this, which means we have to create another function because on OpenGL, this is not platform agnostic. This is basically a platform function that you have to load in like the other functions in the Win32 platform layer like these right here. And so this is what we have to do now in order to control vertical sync. The function that we are interested in is called WindowsGL Swap Interval Extension. And we have to get this using our platform load GL function. Now this function right here is something that we have to expose to the globals of Windows because we have to call this through a function from the outside. So we're going to put this right here. We have a pointer to a function Windows GL swap interval extension. And then once we have this function, we also want to make sure that we are able to call it and therefore we have to create a platform function right here. And I would like to put this below the platform swap buffers function. This function takes in a bool whether we want to have vSync or not, vertical sync. And then we're going to implement this in the Windows platform layer right below the swap buffers function. And it's simply going to be a wrapper around the Windows GL swap interval function and it's supplying VSync to it. That's all we have to do, but it is very important that we do this, otherwise we will run at different frame rates on different systems and I would like to lock it to vertical sync for now. And then we switch back to the main and right below the platform create window function I would like to set the vertical sync to true for now. Uh, hard code it into the game if you want you can create a handle for this later but we'll keep it like this for now. And now the game will run on every system on 60 frames per second if it can reach that frame rate, which it should. In order to add the fixed update loop to the game, we'll switch over to the game.cpp file. And after the initialization, I'm going to paste in the version of the current fixed update loop that I've shown you already. You know, we take the update timer, add delta time to it. And then once we have more than the update delay, we simulate and remove the update delay. And then we reset the input. And so the first thing that I would like to do is to reset or remove from the update window function what we are doing here. So we switch over to the Win32 platform layer and then go to update window, which is right here. And then we get rid of everything that has to do with resetting input. Right now, we just one together input and then store that. So the previous mouse position, the relative mouse position, all of this stuff does not need to be in here. And this is what it should look like. We are just gathering new data and then save that and switch back to the game. And then one last thing that I forgot to actually add in is to keep track of the previous mouse position right in here as well. So whenever we calculate the relative mouse position, we are going to store the previous mouse position. All right, now let's get to the simulate. In order to do that, we have to break this up a little bit for you to understand. So whenever we are simulating, we want to do stuff like change the player's position or change the tiles, but we don't want to draw. So for example, this draw code right here does not need to happen or should not happen in the simulation step. The simulation step is just, just there to change data. So I want to split this up into a simulate function first, and that is easier to do if we just put this up here, void simulate, and then we put everything into simulate that has to do with changing data. So for example, move left and move right, and then if the mouse is down and the mouse is right, or if the right mouse button is down, the left mouse button is down, all of this, we just put this in the simulation step for now. And then we could call this update player. And I like creating local scope out of this. I think it's easier to digest then. And then down here we have the tiles. And this is where I want to make this a little bit more efficient. Uh, why not at this point? All of this code in the drawing tile sets, all of this up until where we draw the tile, this is actually updating the tiles. And so I would like to do this every time a tile got changed, meaning in the simulation step down below the if checks I would like to update the tiles if 
they need updating. So I'm going to put all of this into its own local scope. Takes a little bit and then make sure that we close the braces here at the bottom. So one brace and then another brace. This brace is the outer for loop, this is the inner for loop and then this is the if check. And we only want to update tiles of course if they have been changed. So bool update tiles is false. And then of course we set this to true every time we change a tile. Now this is a little bit more efficient, you don't have to do this, but I like packing it this way. And now we have to quickly fix this code right here, we still have to draw the tiles. So we have to yoink at least the double for loop and the if check for whether the tile is visible. And then we put this at the very bottom here to paste this in. And I think this should already be enough to draw the tiles. Don't think we have to do much more. Now, for the player, we have to do some calculations, but we'll do this later. Let's just fix the update timer and update delay real quick. We have to add some more data to the game state, so switch over to the game.h. And then over here, we create a float update timer. And then at the very top, we post in two new const expressions, the updates per seconds and the update delay. Now you might have noticed this became no longer red, it's already fixed, all of the errors should be fine. In the simulation step we update the player and in the drawing below that we draw. But there's one last thing that we have to do. First we need to actually keep track of the delta time and the reason for that is because we are calculating a previous position or we have our previous position and we have calculated or simulated the new position. And in order to draw smoothly between them we have to interpolate. And that means we have to lerp from the previous to the current one over time. And that basically is what we use the interpolated delta time for. Because we know that the update timer waits for the update delay. And the update timer is always less than the update delay after we have done a simulation. So if we take the update timer which is less than the update delay and divide that by this then we get a value between 0 and 1 and we can use a value between 0 and 1 in a lerp function which means we have to keep track of the previous player position in order to lerp between the two positions and at this point I would like to create a struct player that takes in a position or that has a position and a previous position and both of these are integer positions sorry about that and then instead of the player position in the game state we have a player player and then we get rid of the player position right here obviously we now have to fix all of the errors in the game.cpp file so at the top here we do player.position all right and when we are done we go at the very bottom and this is where we have to do the lerping between the two positions so basically the way this looks is the following we get ourselves a reference to the player and then we calculate the player position using the previous position and the current position using our interpolated delta time which is between zero and one and then we draw the player at that position now we just have to implement this lerp function so you might have noticed that lerp is not implemented, which means we have to add this to the schnitzel lib. So switch over to this and then we go below the i vector 2 because we have to interpolate between i vector 2s. And this is the way it looks like. Right now we're just calling down into a lerp function. But what we do here is we take the x and y components of the two vectors and we lerp between them. So we isolate the x coordinate and then lerp between the x and y and lerp between the two in the float case. And in the integer case, we do basically the same. We convert this into a float, we lerp, and then we floor the result down because that is what an integer would do. When you cast something to an int, the fractional part gets left over. And that means we also have to implement this function. And I would like to put this where we don't have anything according to vector2, so below the maximum function right here. Lerp basically takes in a value a and a value b and a timer. And the way this works is if the timer is zero, then the second part is ignored, which means we start out with a. If the timer is one and we multiply this out, we take one times b and one times minus a. So what we have here is a minus a plus b, which means the a will cancel each other out and then we are are left with b and this is how lerp works we are slowly going from point a to point b over time include math.h at the very top now if we run the game and move our cube which we should be able to you can see that it stutters and it jiggles <laughs> 
it's jiggly jigging and the reason for that is because one last step that we have to do in the simulation loop we have to store the previous position of the player so the game state player.previous position has to be the game state player.position and then if we build now everything should run smoothly which means we have successfully added an update loop to our game that lets us control how many times we update and to show you how it works we can actually go into the game.header file now and then do only 30 updates per second which would make our cube half as fast you see how it got slower compared to before because we are only moving one pixel 30 times a second if you want play around with these values don't make them too high but yeah that's what it is and i think this is very important in games like this because you want to be able to accurately tell if a player hits a certain jump or not so yeah this is everything for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it if you did please leave a like and subscribe it really means a lot and in the next one we are going to add in the celeste sprite finally we're going to add in gravity jumping and moving and obviously the collision with all the tiles until then have a good one peace